Ladies and gentlemen, the radio season has opened officially. Fibber McGee and Molly are back on the air. Welcome home, you kid. Kid. <laughs> For the safety of your smile, use Pepsodent twice a day. See your dentist twice a year. Again this week, the Pepsodent Company presents another in its series of broadcasts to our men in the armed forces throughout the United States. Tonight, for the men of naval aviation at Terminal Island, California, the Pepsodent Show, starring Bob Hope and his guest star, Orson Welles. How do, you, how do you do, ladies and gentlemen? This is Bob broadcasting from Fragrant Terminal Island <laughs> off the beautiful Pacific Hope telling you pilots who fly the supplies from the Salamis to Iran to use Pepsodent on your teeth and you'll never have any hollow ones in your pan. <laughs> yes, sir. This has been a great week getting back home and on the air. Since I was just back from England, I walked down Hollywood Boulevard with a monocle in my eye. And a little kid said to his mother, Hey, Ma, get a load of that wolf with a windshield. <laughs> Then I walked into the Brown Derby and I noticed they had my picture facing the wall. So I said to the manager, uh, what's the idea? He said, well, we can't serve ham these days, so why tantalize the people? <laughs> and everybody was excited because I was back. When Gypsy Rose Lee heard about it, she dropped everything. <laughs> she was doing at the time. And uh, <laughs> Gypsy Rose Lee, that's the star of the picture, the watch and the spine. But I was... Uh, I was so glad to be back, I went down to the blood bank and gave a pint of blood. After a few minutes, the doctor came out and said, have you kissed Hedy Lamar lately? I said, yes, why? He said, we can't get your corpuscles to stop fanning themselves. <laughs> Edward Arnold was there. He doesn't give a pint. He just asked him what they need. And uh, W.C. Fields was there, too. He donated a fifth. I went over to... <laughs> I went over to Paramount and started to give Dorothy Lamour a hello hug, but it doesn't look nice to do that to a married woman. I discovered the next day when her husband mailed my arms back to me. <laughs> but here we are broadcasting for the Navy at Terminal Island. Terminal Island, that's a body of men surrounded by pinup girls. <laughs> and there's so many naval officers here. You know what a naval officer, that's the only gob I've seen who can bend over with his pants on. <laughs> And I want to tell you, it's really busy at this base. Every two minutes, a plane takes off with supplies, and every two minutes, one comes in with Eleanor's luggage. <laughs> and I want to tell you, these naval aviators here can really find beautiful girls here in San Pedro. Then, of course, is the one they got for me. But I went out... <laughs> I went out with a couple of the sailors here last night, and you should see the nice girl they got for me. She was a pistol-packing mama, and all she wanted to do was get loaded. <laughs> Boy, what a girl. She'd been out with so many Navy men, she had bilge water on the knee. <laughs> but we had a nice time. We made the rounds of San Pedro. San Pedro, that's an old Spanish phrase, meaning you take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in the shore patrol wagon before you. <laughs> well, we had a great time and these Navy men are real gentlemen. I want to tell you, a Marine cut in while one of them was dancing and he smiled, bowed, stepped back and gave him the whole floor, a board at a time. <laughs> Night. What a night and what a dancer I had She tripped the light fantastic And everybody else on the floor <laughs> And I saw a sailor with a pretty girl And I tried to figure out how I could get her away from him So I sneaked up behind the sailor and whispered I'm from the FBI, the girl you're with is a Japanese agent And he said, brother, I'm from the USS Arkansas And what I'm telling her ain't no secret from the picture Dixie and I'm going to help. A little thing called... By the way, have you...
have you tried Going out for a little buggy ride With a girl by your side And a horse that knows the way back home Summer sky, rosy lane While a lark in the meadow entertains And you can drop the rain With a horse that knows the way back home And between all the farms You can then use your arms To express what you long to say And you won't mind at all If the horse wants to stall Just to try out some new mown hay So if you should decide To go out for a little buggy ride And perhaps Win a bride Get a horse that knows the way Either black or brown or gray But a horse Horse that that knows knows the the way Back back home Well, well, here we are Out in an open buggy all alone Yes, here we are, all alone Well, how about it? Let's next Okay (laughs) Oh, not so quick, you mix me up Do you really like me, Robert? Yeah, I like you a lot. Why? I don't know. I guess it's because you're a girl. (laughs) Did you like the movie, Robert? Sure, I did. Oh, I love that Betty Grable. Robert, why do you like Betty Grable better than me? I don't know. It's like farms. Some of them have better crops. (laughs) But don't you think I'm pretty? Look at my hair. It's as fine and golden as ripe corn silk. Yep, yep, it sure is. Just like corn silk. <laughs> Robert, quit putting it in your pipe. <laughs> Robert, you're so different from the other boys. All they want to do is neck. You're more of the quiet, studious type. <laughs> yep, yep. I, I do a lot of deep thinking. <laughs> what do you think about? Necking. <laughs> Gee, you got your hair all slicked down nice tonight, Robert. What'd you put on it? Oleomargarine. <laughs> you put oleomargarine on your hair? Well, there's a war on. You can't get butter. <laughs> but we'll have some soon. Pa just bought us a cow. Did your cow eat a lot? Yeah, but we don't mind. She's got her own points. <laughs> Robert. Yeah, Francie. Robert, I feel a little chilly. Yeah, winter's coming. (laughs) Robert, I feel cold. Put your arms around me. Now, kiss me. Okay. Well, how'd you like it? You know, I think we got the answer to the fuel shortage. (laughs) Let's try it again. More exciting than bubble gum, isn't it? (laughs) Gosh, Robert, where'd you ever learn to kiss that way? Getting corks out of jugs. I thought you used your nose for that. (laughs) Oh, Fran. You talk like I was a freak, like I had 11 toes or something. Well, haven't you? Of course not. I only have 10, like everybody sees. Seven on my right foot and three on my left. (laughs) Well, here we are at my house, Robert. You've been a perfect gentleman all the way home. Yeah, now put away that (laughs) flamethrower. Let's sit here in the buggy and say goodnight, huh? All right, but be quiet. Father's asleep upstairs. Now, Robert. Robert. Robert! Robert! He said every night the same thing. (laughs) Say, who is it down there? It's me, Father. I brought home one of my boyfriends. Did you bring home one of your girlfriends, too? (laughs) No. Wait till you have a slow night. (laughs) Who are you with? Father, I'm down here with a nice young man. Good, good. Are you making hay with that nice Smith boy? No. Are you making hay with that nice Johnson boy? No, I'm with Robert Hope. Oh, in the cornfield, eh? (laughs) You know, Robert, you and I have been going together for a long time. All our friends are getting married. That's right. Well, Robert, you're 28 years old now. Haven't you ever thought of children? Yeah, but I like you better. (laughs) Hey, Hope, 
Are you necking with my daughter? Oh, no, sir. Are you kissing her? Oh, no, sir. Are you holding hands with her? No, sir. What do you hear from the rest of the campfire girls? <laughs> so if you should decide to go out for a little buggy ride and perhaps win a bride. Just get a horse that knows the way back, either black or brown or sway back. Get a horse that knows the way back home. Poor Miriam, poor Miriam, neglected using Miriam. So she waited for a thing for the phone to ring. Hello. Wrong number. Uh-oh. Hello. Wrong number. Uh-oh. So girls don't be like Miriam. Use Miriam. It's the film you feel on your teeth that makes your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste with Irium removes that film, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. You see, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains Irium. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsodent toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with men in the service. Try Pepsodent toothpaste for just one week. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See if it doesn't uncover that natural brilliance of your smile. Get a tube of Pepsodent toothpaste, and remember, Pepsodent, and only Pepsodent, contains Irium. Dear Miriam, dear Miriam, now she's heard of Irium, so the telephone ring is a busy thing. Hello. Some number. Oh. Hello. Some number. Oh. So girls just be like Miriam. You oh, very nice. Thank you, choir. Thank you. And say, by the way, thank you, Stan Kenton. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet our new band leader, Stan Kenton, right here. How about this? Thank you, Bob. Sorry I didn't have a chance to introduce you last week. Now, listen, let's get started right, Stan. I want to know one thing. Did you go to see Road to Morocco and they got me covered? And did you go to see my new picture, Let's Face It? No, I didn't see any of them, Bob. Why should I? I think this guy knows he's the only band leader left. <laughs> I understand you're quite a hit with the gals, too. What's your technique? Oh, that's a secret. Well, you can tell me, can't you? Listen, Bob, does Crosby tell Sinatra? <laughs> oh, Stan, don't think those two boys are jealous of each other. They're not. They're very friendly. They are? Yeah, Crosby likes Sinatra, and Sinatra thinks Crosby's one, too. But Stan, you really like the girls, don't you? Yes, Bob, I do <laughs> Well, here she is coming in with a ring and a prayer Oh, well, hello, Mr. Hope Stan, you can't resist Who's this handsome creature? Well, Miss Vague, I want you to meet our new orchestra leader, Stan Kenton. Oh, it's a pleasure to meet you, tall, dark, and scared. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Stan, this is Miss Vera Vague. I uh, got to get more money. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, bless your heart. <laughs> I can see you and Loop Snoot here will get along fine. <laughs> Miss Vague, Stan is our new orchestra leader. Well, I'm musically inclined. <laughs> well, Stan also paints. Well, I'm artistically inclined. <laughs> Bob, she's leaning all over me. She's inclined that way, too. <laughs> Pay no attention to trout snout, Mr. Kenton. And so you've taken the job as band leader on Mr. Hope's program. Well, it's a living. You want to bet? <laughs> Tell me, Miss Vague, are you married? Uh, no, no, you see, I never met Tommy Manville. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so good-looking and young, Mr. Kenton, so different from anybody else on this program. <laughs> <laughs> 
Why, you're the very flower of youth. But, Miss Vague, how about me? Quiet century plant. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, tell me, what's your favorite instrument, Mr. Kenton? The piano. Oh, is that so? Well, you know, I've had a lot of experience with pianos myself. Yes, Miss Vague, but playing on them is different from moving them. Boy, you. <laughs> you have an answer for everything, haven't you? <laughs> Too bad nobody's ever been able to explain you. <laughs> well, anyway, I don't care. I just love music. Beethoven, you know, was my favorite. I bet you were his, too. Uh, why don't you come over to my house someday? I want to try out a new booby trap. Yeah. <laughs> but really, now really, I am very musical. Just last night, you know, I wrote a song. You wrote a song? Yes, it was just a matter of inspiration. I was out canoeing with a handsome naval aviator in the moonlight. Just as he put his arm around me, I thought of this beautiful melody. So you left the naval aviator and ran home and wrote it down? He's stupid, isn't he? <laughs> you feel on your teeth that makes your teeth look dull. Pepsodent toothpaste with irium removes that film, uncovers the natural brightness of your smile. You see, Pepsodent and only Pepsodent contains irium. It loosens film and floats it away quickly, easily, safely. And when film is gone, Pepsodent toothpaste brings new brightness to your teeth. No wonder more people than ever before use Pepsi and toothpaste today. No wonder it's number one with men in the service. Try Pepsi and toothpaste for just one week. See if your teeth don't feel cleaner, look brighter. See if it doesn't uncover that natural brilliance of your smile. Get a tube of Pepsi and toothpaste. Remember, Pepsi and only Pepsi contains irium. So girls don't be like Miriam, use Iria. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce one of the real geniuses of the theater, Mr. Orson Welles. Here he is, right here.
Thank you very much. I presume you're Bob Hope. <laughs> Why, yes, I am. Well, go sit down somewhere. I'll call you if I need you. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. This is my show. I'm supposed to be right here. What do you think Pepsodin is paying me for? Mr. Hope, there are some questions even a genius can't answer. Yeah. <laughs> I'll bet somewhere in his family tree there's an ensign. But I want to tell you, Orson, we're very glad to have you with us tonight. I've, I've always wanted to meet you. You know, people say that uh, you resemble me. Yes. Uh, in fact, I'm becoming known as the Bob Hope of this generation. Yeah. <laughs> That's a fine thing to say to the youngest man in this room, mentally. Say, by the way, Orson, what do you do? Well, I'm a producer, director, writer, and actor. Well, what do you do for a living? Uh... Say that, tell me, was that me? <laughs> That's you, yeah. <laughs> me, next. I had an egg all to myself, didn't I? Oh, thank you. I'm glad you, you. You're safe. <laughs> Wasn't that cute? I was standing there scrambling that little kid all by myself. <laughs> and I looked at you. I thought you were next, and I followed that kid. I'll fix that for now. Say, they tell me you got an early start in this business, Mr. Wells. Bob, I was so young when I went on the stage, they had to change me more often than the scenery. <laughs> and you're still a pinup boy to me But tell me <laughs> Tell me, what are you doing these days, Orson? I'm going to England very soon to make a picture Oh, you're pulling my leg I wouldn't dream of it, old man <laughs> At your age, those things come apart Now, wait a minute <laughs> I'm going to England, Bob. I am well, going to England. Tell me, let me know when you're leaving for England. I'll give you a note to the king. Oh, are you and the king good friends? Good friends. Orson, do you know where I slept in Buckingham Palace? Yeah, it's damp down there, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, when you go to England, I suppose you'll do your magician act for the boys over there. Yes, I will, Bob. Well, you know, Orson, I think you're the greatest magician in the world. You really think I'm a great magician? I certainly do. 50,000 bachelors in the country, and you make Rita Hayworth disappear. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me, what did you do? Pull her out of your sleeve? There is a limit to what you can do with magic, Bob. I couldn't any more pull Rita out of my sleeve than you could pull Mussolini out of your baggy pants. <laughs> or whoever that is hiding in there. Well, where do you keep your butter? Say, but, uh... <laughs> You know, Orson, I'm a little jealous. After all, I was going with Rita first. It was a pretty steady thing. You were going with Rita? Well, I wasn't exactly going with her. I danced with her once at the Hollywood Canteen until the cops made me take off the uniform. <laughs> but you know, before she married you, some gossip was spreading a story around town that Rita was sweet on me. I know, Bob, but I think you went too far when you had it mimeographed and dropped it from airplane. <laughs> well, while we're on the subject, Orson, you know, I gave Rita a necklace. Isn't this rather an odd time to bring that up? Well, I want it back, that's all. <laughs> now, don't get excited about it, Bob. After all, how expensive could it have been? Ten Pepsodent tubes strung together. <laughs> well, a week's pay is a week's pay. But Orson, your romance with Rita started when she was in your magic show and you cut her in half, didn't it? Yes, Bob, I knew it was love the first time I saw her. <laughs> Drop the net. <laughs> the first time I saw her. Why do I stand here reading this tripe when I could get a good job at Lockheed? <laughs> well, my agent was going to get me a job there, but I refused to let him eat 10% of my lunch. But tell me, do you actually believe in magic and psychic stuff, Orson? Can you read people's minds? Why, yes, Bob. I might say I'm an amateur mind reader. Well, can you read my mind? Bob, I said amateur, not immature. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, I'll try. Uh, give me a minute and I'll transform myself into a mystic. <laughs> I am now my real self, Swami Wells. <laughs> I am the great Swami. I see all. I know all. I'm Bob Hope. I smell all, too. <laughs> I will give you a reading. Here, let us sit in front of the crystal ball. Is this your crystal ball? Why has it got two holes drilled in it? On Thursday nights, I go bowling. <laughs> 
Sit down, Bob. I'll read your future. Now, wait a minute. That ain't a crystal ball. You're reading my future from a grapefruit. Well, that's the one I use for squirts. (laughs) (laughs) I, uh... (laughs) I can look in a crystal ball and tell you happenings for the future. I can tell you who's going to be in the White House in 1950. You need a crystal ball to see who's going to be in the White House in 1950? Yes. Republican. (laughs) We'll hold a seance. Put the lights out. Ready? We are now entering the spirit world. Can I ask you a question? All right, Hope. Oh, great spirit, are you there? There's someone here who wants to ask you some questions. Okay, but make it snappy. I'm in 1A. (laughs) Hope, you may now speak to the spirit. He is ready to obey your order. Fine. Spirit, I'd like to speak to my old granddad. What was your order? Old granddad. (laughs) Sorry, it's after curfew. Cologne, are you a spirit now? That's right, Hope. I am a spirit who sees all, knows all, past, present, future. I have great psychic powers because the ghosts of the great beyond have made me their lieutenant. (laughs) J.G. Cologne, why have you got so many screws loose? Well, I don't know, Hope. Yes, there was absenteeism on the assembly line. (laughs) Cologne, I don't believe you're in the great beyond at all. Don't be silly, Hope. Of course I am. I'm sitting here with Cleopatra on my lap. Colonna, Cleopatra's been dead for 400 years. She has? Yes. Well, I'll take back my fraternity pin. (laughs) Come over here, Colonna. Come over here right away. Now, wait a minute. Hope I'm going to perform my greatest trick. You've heard how Orson Welles saws girls in half? Well, I'm going to saw Orson Welles in half. Come here, Orson. Uh, Colonna, that's my trick. You've never done it before. I'm afraid that uh, there might uh, be a slip-up. Quit Orson, Orson. I'll... I'll bet you a thousand dollars I can do it. A thousand dollars. I'll bet. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> oh! <laughs> well, which end should I pay it to? <laughs> for the memory, you Navy men who fly for freedom in the sky. A nation's heart goes with you Like your ground crew standing by We thank you so much And thanks for the memory Of every bond you bought Folks, these boys bought a lot Not only do they give their dough But everything they've got Let's thank them so much Folks, let's help these men's great endeavor To bring the world freedom forever And they'll do it if we pull together Back their attack With all our jack Well, we've had a fine day here at Terminal Island Thanks to Captain McGinnis, Lieutenant Hooper And a wonderful bunch of boys here Bunch of great boys You know, in the art galleries They have paintings that symbolize America A farm in Ohio Or Coney Island on Sunday And smokestacks above Pittsburgh But the best action picture of America today is the Navy doing its stuff on the road to victory. It's a long road that leads from New York to Berlin, from the Golden Gate to Tokyo, and there's water on both sides and air above it. And that's where you'll find the Navy, night and day. Like the Army throws a bridge across a river, Navy throws a bridge of ships and planes across an ocean. And the men in blue work with the men in khaki, not only hand in hand, but heart to heart, for they've been through part of hell together. Yes, sir, and if we work in the factory and on the farm like our sailor boy worked to cover that first beachhead on the fortress of Europe, they'll come back from that hell a lot sooner. You know, George Washington said, without a decisive naval force, we can do nothing definite. But with it, we can do everything honorable and glorious. Good night, fellas. We'll be back at the same time broadcasting for the men of the Army Air Force at Bitter Field. Since the Navy Department does not endorse any product, this broadcast is not intended as an endorsement or product by the Navy Department. You folks up around Seattle, we'll be up there to see you Sunday. Seattle, Washington. Beginning Friday, October 1st, your druggists will celebrate Wartime Health Week. Drop in early for your free copy of Health Rules for Wartime and get several packages of pepsin and antiseptic and other health products participating in this nationwide event. 
broadcast came to you from Pasadena, California. This is Wendell Niles speaking. This is the National Broadcasting Company. You're listening to KFI Los Angeles. <laughs> 